Homeschooling is growing at an incredibly rapid rate. According to some estimates, 3.1 million children are currently being homeschooled in the United States. Today, we're going to be looking into the surge of homeschooling and what that tells us about how our schools are failing children across the nation. By the end of this video, you'll understand why homeschooling is growing, but also what this says about the American educational system and what we can do to provide better education for all children. Hi, I'm Spencer Doman. I have a master's in early childhood education and more than 15 years of experience educating children and their parents around the globe. Welcome to Doman Learning. This is why homeschooling is growing and how our schools are failing to meet parents' education demands. Let's start by talking about the modern history of homeschooling. It was really in the 1970s when homeschooling was popularized by John Holt and his unschooling theory, which really focused on child-led learning. But it started as a small movement. In 1973, only 13,000 children were estimated to be homeschooled. Things changed in the 1980s. Thousands of Christian parents turned to homeschooling during a period called the Satanic Panic. During this time, Christian parents were very worried that their children might learn anti-Christian teachings in school or turn to Satanism and pulled their children out of the school system. Historian Milton Gaither called this period the changing of the guard. By the end of the decade, an estimated 275,000 children were being homeschooled. During the 1990s and 2000s, homeschooling continued to grow. It went from an estimated 1 million students in 1997 to a record 3.7 million students during COVID and then stabilized afterwards at about 3.1 million. To give you a bit of context, that means the number of children who are homeschooled today is greater than the number of children that go to Catholic school. As the number of homeschoolers grew, so did acceptance in society. As someone who grew up in the 1990s and was homeschooled for some time, I remember the stigma that existed during that period for families who homeschooled. Now, that stigma might still exist in certain circles, but there's no question that acceptance has grown in homeschooling today. We can see clearly that homeschooling is growing, but is its growth outpacing other forms of education? From 2016 to 2022, the overall schooling population grew by only 0.7%, but the homeschooling population grew by an amazing 36%, growing from an estimated 2.3 million children to over 3.1 million students. Now, why is homeschooling growing? Why are these parents choosing to take their children out of school? And what are the concerns that are leading parents to make that decision? Before I answer that question, let me take a second here to make a side note, which I feel is important. Homeschooling might be a great option for parents with concerns about the educational system, but I also know that there are many parents that share those same concerns for whom Homeschooling is not an option. In this video, I won't be addressing some of the very valid criticisms and critiques of homeschooling. For example, there is no national database of homeschoolers in the United States, so we can't be sure of exactly how many children are homeschooled or what their exact situations are. This can lead to many children falling through the cracks and not getting the education that they need and deserve. However, that will be a topic for another video. Today, we're going to be addressing broader education and traditional schooling and what we can do to improve those for students. If you'd like to see more videos like this in the future about educational trends, make sure to like this video, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. To understand why homeschooling is growing, we have to understand what the concerns of parents are. Let's go into the top reasons why homeschooling is growing. According to the National Institute for Education Statistics, the primary concern of homeschooling parents is safety, drugs, and peer pressure. In fact, 80% of homeschooling parents cite safety as a concern for their child and 25% of them cite it as their primary concern. Many people assume that it's actually religious objections that is the primary concern of most homeschooling parents, but surprisingly, it's actually fifth on the list of 
biggest concerns, and safety is a much larger concern. There was actually a great New York Times article which followed nine different families that chose to homeschool their children and interviewed the parents as to why they made that decision. One mom interviewed in the article, a mom of three who lived in Boston, said that she hated the idea of kindergartners having to go through lockdown drills and was worried that her child would be scared of other kids bringing guns to class. These concerns are very valid. The Washington Post estimated that between 2000 and 2020, it estimated 240,000 children had experienced gun violence at schools. A lot of parents are also concerned about bullying. In fact, according to NCES statistics, one in five children reported being bullied. It's completely reasonable for parents to worry about their children being unsafe at schools. Growing up in the 90s, I remember the school shooting at Columbine very well and how it shook our society to the core. When we look at more recent events, like what happened at Sandy Hook Elementary or Uvalde, Texas, these events scare many parents and make them consider the option of homeschooling. These kinds of news stories often get 24 seven coverage and they reinforce one of the biggest fears that parents have. What if my child is in danger and I can't help them? Even the greatest critics of homeschooling can certainly understand why some parents might be afraid of school safety. After safety, the second most cited concern of homeschooling parents is actually moral instruction. In fact, Three in four homeschooling parents cited a lack of moral instruction in schools as a concern. I need to differentiate here between moral instruction and religious instruction. Parents who are concerned specifically about moral instruction are just worried that their child won't grow up to be a good person. Actually, only 13% of parents cited religious instruction as their primary concern about the school system. That came as a big surprise to me and I'm sure many other people out there. One homeschooling mom in that New York Times article did a better job of explaining her concerns about moral instruction than I probably could. This mom had actually founded a homeschooling co-op called Black Yard Learning Community. She said about her son, the way he is able to tap into treating people in their fullest dignity is just as important to me as him being able to form his letters. Let me pause here just to say that when we look at parents who cite moral instruction as a big concern, these could be parents that come from different religious backgrounds or have a host of different political viewpoints. However, one similarity that they have is a great concern that their child won't receive the moral instruction that they need, that their child won't become a good person. I think all of us can understand why parents would have this concern, and especially in this day and age, how they'd want for nothing more than for their child to be a good person who gives back to their community and has healthy, loving relationships. The third biggest concern of homeschooling parents is a lack of academic standards in schools. 73% of parents cited this as a concern, with 15% citing it as their biggest concern. Recent research from the National Assessment for Educational Progress showed that about two in three American children were not reading or doing math at age level. Given these kinds of statistics, it's understandable why so many parents are concerned about academic standards. We should add here as well, that there are parents who might have different concerns about what the problems or shortcomings of academic standards are. For example, Christian parents might be upset that evolution is taught in the classroom. And then on the other hand, there might be black families who are concerned at the lack of instruction about black history in the United States. In fact, the US Census Bureau recently released statistics that showed that Black families who homeschool increased from about 3% to about 16% during the pandemic. This increase was actually more than any other racial group. Now, there are various reasons for this trend, but one of the main ones is concerns about academic standards. On a personal note, as someone who's passionate about children being able to learn in a joyous and fun environment, I can really understand these parents' concerns. If I was sending my child to school, I might ask myself, is my child going into an intellectually stimulating environment? Will they love learning? Or is this school going to kill my child's love of learning? 
As someone who personally loves learning about history and languages and math, I am concerned that schools have suboptimal teaching in these subjects. So those are the top three concerns that parents have. But there's a fourth concern, which is still very relevant, and I have to say of personal importance to me. I wanna talk about kids with special needs in the school system. While only 23% of parents cited their child's special needs as a reason for their homeschooling, this is disproportionate compared to the general population. Only about 15% of children in schools have special needs. Why are so many parents of children with special needs turning to homeschooling? Well, one of the main reasons is probably the increase in diagnoses of developmental disabilities and autism in the United States. In fact, as many as one in 14 children is currently being diagnosed with some kind of developmental disability. And in some US states, as many as one in 35 children are being diagnosed with autism. Having worked with kids with special needs and intellectual disabilities for more than 15 years, I've heard from many parents about why they chose homeschooling for their children compared to standardized schooling. Here are some of the concerns that I've heard from parents over the years. First, that teachers in schools aren't trained adequately to deal with their child's intellectual, physical, or behavioral challenges. These kinds of challenges could range from children with autism who are very hyperactive to children with cerebral palsy who might need help with feeding and personal hygiene. Many parents over years of raising their children become experts in how to raise and deal with their child's specific needs and they simply don't trust a stranger to be able to do it in the same way that they can. A second concern that many parents of children with special needs have is bullying. I think we can all understand why parents would be afraid that their child might face bullying, be excluded, and not be able to make friends. A third reason that parents might be scared to send their kids to school is that they feel that standardized testing is a suboptimal way of gauging their child's intelligence. Many kids with special needs have issues with speech or with writing, and that might make taking standardized exams very difficult. A fourth reason is many parents of kids with special needs are concerned that their children will be lost in the system, that their child won't be able to get the individualized attention that they need, especially in a classroom with 25 to 35 other kids. A fifth and final reason that parents might choose homeschooling is that it offers them flexibility to choose other kinds of treatment and therapy options for their special needs child that might help them make major developmental gains. In the end, about one in four families cite their child having special needs as a reason for their homeschooling. And so while they are a minority, they are an important part of the homeschooling community. To summarize, the biggest concern of homeschooling parents are first and foremost, safety and peer pressure, second, the need for moral instruction, and third, the lack of academic standards in the school system. In addition, a disproportionate number of homeschooling children have special needs, and that's an important reason for those families. Now that we know the top concerns that homeschooling parents have, the question becomes, how can we improve public education and traditional schooling to improve education for all students? Personally, I'd love to know whether you're a parent of a child who homeschools or not, what are your primary concerns with today's educational system? We would love to hear from you in the comments below. How can we improve traditional schooling? Well, a good first place to look is the primary concern that parents cite, which is safety. The Learning Policy Institute states that there have been two ways that schools have tried to tackle this safety concern. The first is increasing security, and the second is building supportive school communities. Let me talk about security first. This might seem like the obvious way to improve school safety, but actually the results of increasing security have been pretty lackluster. The National Institute for Justice has released research that shows that violence is technically down in public schools. However, 
About 66% of schools are still reporting a violent incident in their school. And I don't know about you, but I feel like that's still way too much. To address security concerns, about nine in 10 schools have reported introducing security cameras and controlling access to the school. This is up from about half of schools reporting that in 1975. Despite this increase, according to the Learning Policy Institute, it really hasn't made schools much safer. On top of that, in 1975, only about 1% of schools had police or school resource officers present in the school. Now, over 50% of schools have them. Now, this raises concerns that if we combine increased student arrests, but at the same time not seeing a dramatic decrease in violent incidents, is it really making a difference? Is our solution to school safety arresting children? On the other hand, research is showing that building supportive school communities may be the best way to address safety concerns. And in my opinion, it might address all the other biggest concerns as well. Many students currently in U.S. schools do not have access to quality mental health care. A study from UC Davis recently showed that adding a school counselor decreases misbehavior among students and also increases academic performance of boys by as much as 1%. That's just one counselor. However, the American School Counselor Association states that it's best to have one counselor for every 250 students in a school, but currently the number is more like one in 415 students. In 2022, the Bipartisan Safer Communities Act allocated $1.2 billion for schools to hire professionals for exactly this reason. And I would implore schools to use that funding to get counselors to help mental health care in their schools. Adding school counselors can give support to children who are the most predisposed to behavioral issues. For example, children who might be living in unstable home environments, kids who are the victims of bullying, or kids who might have mental health issues like depression, anxiety, uh, or anger management issues. Furthermore, I believe it's very important for schools to start building smaller learning communities so that parents and children can learn about things that they value. This will develop tighter bonds and a sense of community between students, parents, and teachers creating a deeper respect of the school that the child attends. Imagine if kids could attend small community co-ops with their parents where they could learn about subjects and interests that the children share with their parents. There could be a Christian learning co-op uh, or a black history co-op. And these groups wouldn't necessarily have to be religious or political in nature. For example, there could be a community service co-op where children learn about the value of giving back to the community. There could be an entrepreneur co-op for children to learn about how to build small businesses or a arts and creativity co-op where children create their own art and get to display it and share it. This would be a great way to create a sense of community, connection, and become a source of pride for children and what they're learning. It would help parents feel like their children are receiving moral instruction that they feel is important. And for children with special needs, it would be a great way for them to be able to learn and engage with other children while their parents could be there to give them the support they need and also make important connections with the rest of the parent community. By building these supportive communities around schools, it can create a more positive atmosphere for children and parents alike. Most importantly, it'll allow parents to be confident that their children are receiving a better education and as a community, they're increasing the safety of children. Thanks so much for watching until the end. Education is my passion, and I love teaching children and parents alike. If you enjoyed this video, please hit like, subscribe, and make sure to hit that notification bell. Tell us in the comments below what educational trend you'd like us to make our next video about.